Hello and uh, welcome everybody. We are in uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. It's uh, the second largest uh, city of the country and the most populated because two and a half million people are living here. The first mention, the first written mention of the city is from the end of the 11th century. Abu Abdullah al-Bakri, a famous uh, scientist and uh, geographist, was uh, uh, written about uh, it uh, on, on his map. And the second mention is from Gaspero Balbi. He was a traveler and a merchant from uh, Venice. He traveled here and he mentioned that uh, the bay, this is how he called uh, this territory, uh, is uh, very popular because uh, they are selling a lot of pearls and uh, these pearls are uh, yeah, very very common uh, in this uh, region. So the city actually it was uh, established in the beginning of the 19th century by the house of uh, Al Falasakh uh, and uh, uh, it was under the occupation of uh, Abu Dhabi so actually Abu Dhabi was uh, uh, who was uh, responsible for uh, for Dubai but after but uh, in the year of uh, 1833 the Al Maktoum uh, dynasty took over of this uh, region and uh, since then uh, it's uh, ruled by uh, the the sheikh uh, of uh, the sheikhs of uh, Al Maktoum currently uh, Mohammed uh, bin Rashid Al Maktoum is uh, who is uh, the ruler of uh, Dubai and uh, he is also the Prime Minister of uh, the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, so what happened uh, after 1930 when uh, the pearl industry was crashed not because of the economic uh, failure of uh, the 1920s but uh, because of the First World War as well because uh, they were like uh, Yes, stealing all, all the all, all the pearls uh, from here. Yeah, Dubai and Abu Dhabi were in war uh, after 1947 because uh, they didn't agree where is the border between of the two Emirates, and uh, uh, this fight uh, took a long, long time. And actually, this conflict was uh, ended when uh, in 1971 uh, the seven Emirates uh, were made. Uh, an agreement to establish the new country of the United Arab Emirates. This was on the 2nd of December uh, 1971 and uh, this is very interesting that before this agreement in 1966 uh, Dubai made an agreement uh, with uh, Qatar. Uh, they already made an, a union uh, because uh, they found uh, in the same year the oil fields in 1966 and uh, yeah, this uh, alliance with Qatar didn't take long time because uh, uh, yeah, they made the new country of the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, so what happened uh, after? In uh, 1973 they established a new currency of uh, this country, the Arabic uh, dirhams. So after discovering the oil fields, uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, Dubai was growing very fast from all point of views industry, economy and uh, everything. They were constructing uh, uh, a lot of uh, buildings and uh, the tourism was growing as well. And a lot of foreign workers came here because uh, they had an opportunity to have jobs from uh, India and from Pakistan. So the population uh, growth 300 uh, percent. This is uh, very huge. This is why uh, currently there are two and a half million people uh, uh, living here. It was a very good investment from uh, from the government because uh, currently they made a lot of profit from uh, tourism and uh, from uh, selling apartments and uh, uh, these uh, uh, buildings uh, business and a uh, lot of uh, huge companies are here, a lot of offices. So it's not just the oil, the oil is uh, now only 6% uh, uh, of the revenue of uh, of uh, Dubai. Yeah, for example, Jebel Ali is the largest uh, artificial harbor which is uh, uh, made here in Dubai. This is the largest uh, artificial harbor of the world. And uh, you can imagine how much uh, was invested there and how many profit uh, did you make from that. Another interesting fa uh, fact is uh, that in that year when uh, the United Arab Emirates were established, the British uh, left uh, 
uh, this uh, region because they always try to take control of, uh, of it and uh, in 19, in uh, 1896 uh, it was made a peace uh, between Dubai and uh, the British uh, Kingdom that uh, they will uh, uh, that the British will protect uh, Dubai from the Osman territory which is another interesting fact uh, that uh, even though these uh, seven Emirates uh, were united in uh, 1971 and made this country of United Arab Emirates each Emirate has his own rules and uh, his own laws for example in some Emirates uh, alcohol is forbidden here in Dubai it's not the case even uh, parties are allowed so they don't take uh, the Muslim religions and restrictions uh, so uh, strict uh, like uh, other uh, Muslim countries or other Muslim uh, Emirates so Dubai is uh, in fact uh, more relaxed from uh, this uh, point of view another interesting fact is that uh, before 5000 years here, here was everything covered by sand so yeah you can imagine uh, the big changes which uh, which were occurred since then We are in the downtown of Dubai This is the business bay A lot of offices uh, are there But these skyscrapers are hosting a lot of apartments as well, not only uh, offices This is the Dubai frame, uh, the biggest frame of the world. It's 150 meters uh, high. Uh, it was uh, constructed uh, between 2013 and uh, January of 2018. The constructions were led by the architect uh, Fernando Donis and uh, they used uh, aluminium, steel, glass and uh, concrete for this uh, huge building as uh, it stands from uh, it stands on uh, very tough uh, legs <laughs> and uh, the most uh, interesting uh, thing about this frame is that uh, on the one side you can see the old Dubai and uh, from on the other side you can see the modern uh, architectural buildings the famous uh, skyscrapers and uh, the tallest uh, building of the world, the Burj Khalifa so yeah, let's uh, climb uh, this building and let's check how is the view uh, from uh, the top it uh, must be very amazing Inside we can find the museum which is uh, uh, presenting the Arabic culture
we are we arrived upstairs and there is a glass wall it's amazing <laughs> now trick one is for people who are afraid of the height or have some heart problems and as you can walk you can see it's like it's discovered under your feet Tell me some picture from the meal life. <laughs> Probably for a big price. Entrance fee is uh, like 12 euros. So I think for this amazing uh, view and yeah, for this experience it's, it's worth to pay it. On the left side you can see the old Dubai. On the right side is uh, the modern it's like a mirror between new and old transition time travel walking through this frame Absolutely amazing. As you step on it, it reveals. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, this increases the scariness of uh, this uh, glass walking uh, uh, bridge. <laughs> So let's check the right side, there is the modern Dubai. As you can see some new skyscrapers are uh, in construction currently as well. And uh, that one is the Burj Khalifa, the tallest uh, building of uh, the world. Absolutely amazing.
they saw now was a movie about uh, the future of Dubai. Yeah, amazing graphics, but I don't know, maybe in 100 or 200 years uh, these goals can be accomplished. This is the Dubai Mall, uh, and in this vlog we will uh, take a walk uh, around uh, uh, the mall. And uh, well, of course uh, you can guess that I will not present the shops and uh, uh, these uh, uh, selling uh, locations, but uh, we will take uh, a visit to the famous aquarium of, uh, of uh, Dubai, which is absolutely amazing. And yeah, I think uh, you already realized that uh, I'm not taking off my mask is because. The fine is uh, 3,000 Arab dirhams, which is like 660 euros. So it's really, really a lot, and uh, there are cameras everywhere. Yeah, so we will take a walk, take a walk uh, to the aquarium first, and uh, there is another sightseeing attractions here, uh, the Dubai Fountain. Uh, it's uh, absolutely amazing. Moreover, in the night uh, when it's uh, dark, because uh, it has a lot of lights and uh, it's uh, very enjoyable, and. Uh, there's the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building of the world, just uh, next to the Dubai Mall. And well, if you are just looking for shopping or for cinema or uh, gaming, there are a lot of uh, opportunities uh, here in the Dubai Mall. So uh, I think uh, everybody who comes here uh, can find something for his own taste. largest suspended aquarium of the world it contains 10 billion liters of water absolutely incredible you can find a lot of uh, Guinness records here in uh, Dubai the United Arab Emirates highest building of the world largest frame of the world <laughs> it's like we are walking under the sea
now we will get in a glass boat it will be a very interesting experience <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, kind of nervous about it I'm just curious how will I work and there are some sharks as well <laughs> well it's not that bad I'm not that nervous but it's very interesting underwater zoo uh, it's uh, very interesting well the glass boat trip uh, was not not that interesting it was the top of that uh, suspended aquarium uh, which we saw from the tunnel the big aquarium the biggest of the world it's just uh, plus 20 dirham additional fee to the entrance fee so uh, it's like four and a half euros it's not the end of the world a little bit uh, Dealing with the boat, <laughs> so yeah, I don't regret it. crocodiles <laughs> wow so I read the story of this crocodile uh, it was rescued from Australia in 1986 very interesting uh, story it was threatened the botanical garden after he left uh, the wild and Australian laws don't let uh, uh, the crocodiles to yeah, to transport them back to the wild that uh, is explainable because uh, after this crocodile grows so long and uh, so big it's not uh, not okay to transfer it back uh, uh, to the nature because other crocodiles can be threatened by that and uh, yeah, after uh, it was brought here with uh, his favorite female crocodile <laughs> as, the, as I read it uh, it was growing much more now it's five meters long. There you can see its head. The male one 
has uh, 800 uh, kilograms it can even reach one ton in the next 10 years another interesting fact about it that uh, it can wait 12 months uh, uh, for the opportunity to attack to have food find all kinds of shops here In the Dubai Mall we can find an ice rink and the ski slope is in the Emirates Mall. But it's still incredible. You find something like this in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Burj Khalifa, tallest building of the world, 828 uh, meters high, next to the Dubai Mall. This is the Dubai Mall, actually, I think it's the exit 4 of the mall. I will make a separate vlog about Burj Khalifa. This is the 
Dubai Mall from outside. And you can see there a pedestrian uh, walk. It's uh, very fancy, like uh, 900 uh, meters long. And it takes the way from the Dubai uh, metro. The, du the metro station of uh, the Burj Khalifa and Dubai Mall is over there. And uh, you can just walk through this uh, tunnel. It's uh, very modern and very fancy. And very useful and very practical as well. This is the Burj Khalifa lake. It's an artificial lake built on 12 hectares. Of the past is the Burj Khalifa. And on the right side you can see the Dubai Mall. Interesting that uh, they marked the social distancing on the square. Only one person is allowed in the square. Now let's wonder about the Dubai Fountain, which was inaugurated in 2009 and it uh, costed uh, 218 million dollars. So yeah, it's a really, really big fountain. <laughs> it has uh, 600, uh, uh, 6,600 uh, lights, light projectors, and uh, it can have uh, 25 uh, different colors. Well, me myself, I couldn't uh, list uh, 25 colors <laughs> if I would, uh, I must uh, do it. So yeah, it's, uh, it will be really amazing. And one of the other interesting fact is that uh, it can spray 83,000 liters of uh, uh, water uh, in uh, one second in the, in the air. So yeah, it's, it's really, really huge, really amazing. So yeah, let's uh, wonder about it.
We are currently in the Bastakia quarter, which is uh, one of the uh, quarters of the old Dubai. So in this vlog we will uh, take a walk in the old uh, town of uh, Dubai. It will be very interesting because uh, we will see the old uh, buildings from the 18th and 19th century of the Persian and Arabic merchants who were selling uh, purse, carpets, uh, textiles and uh, yeah, all kinds of spices and everything. Uh, and in the background you can see the Al Fahidi fort uh, which was constructed uh, in the 18th century. We will go there too. It hosts the Dubai Museum uh, currently. We will take a boat uh, which costs only one dirham. One dirham is like uh, 22 uh, euro cents, so it's very cheap. So we'll just get in this traditional boat uh, which is uh, serving like more, more hundreds uh, of years uh, here in Dubai to get passengers uh, from one side of the Dubai Creek to another one. So yeah, let's get started and uh, check everything here in the old uh, town of uh, Dubai. This is the Al Fahiri Fort built in 1787 to defend the Dubai Creek. The entrance fee is very cheap, it's only 3 dirhams, it's like 66 euro cents. And it also holds the Dubai Museum. We have bad luck. Fortunately, the Dubai Museum is closed. We can wonder about it only from outside. We cannot go inside of the fortress. It's closed because of the pandemic, because of the coronavirus. In fact, uh, there are not many restrictions here in Dubai. The only one is to wear the face mask, and uh, the police gives uh, very big fines uh, 3,000. Uh, dirhams which is uh, 660 euros <laughs> so I hope that I will not be caught uh, because on some tiny streets or there's nobody walking or not so many people or I don't see any police then uh, uh, I take off the mask some, sometimes because uh, yeah no it's uh, very hot and uh, it's hard uh, talking uh, under the mask and you can see my uh, mimics <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, uh, we cannot go inside, uh, but every other attractions are open, so we don't have uh, any issue here. 
uh, there is no lockdown and uh, people can completely people are completely free to move everywhere so yeah only the face mask is a, a restriction uh, what here is currently in uh, Dubai it's a Muslim mosque unfortunately non-muslims uh, cannot go inside bazaars of the old town hard to walk here through without buying something Hello. Hi, how are you? One minute, I will try for you this one. Oh, no. <laughs> this is only traditional, you know, taking photo for this. Uh -huh. Where are you from? I'm from Hungary. I am from Argentina. <laughs> I don't believe. You are my next country. We are still in the old town, uh, but this uh, district is called Deira. Uh, sim uh, similar buildings as uh, on the other side of the Dubai Creek. But uh, yeah, there's, uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, there are much more bazaars and shops uh, because everybody's stopping me. Yeah, come sir, come sir, buy something, buy something. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just bought some uh, Aladdin lamps, uh, you know, with that one with the genie. I, uh, it was really on my list uh, to buy it, so it was uh, not because they were persuading me to, to buy it. Yeah, if you like negotiating and uh, buying stuff, then this is a good place because there are a lot of uh, souks, how they call it, a uh, uh, lot of souk. <laughs> and uh, 
this uh, I think it's a synonym for for uh, bazaars so it's a great place to buy souvenirs and spices and all kind of stuff yeah if you have any good negotiating uh, skills uh, or strategies you can leave a comment for that uh, I can tell you my secret I think no it's not a secret but <laughs> I just what I'm using usually um, when uh, when the seller doesn't want to let uh, more from the price then I just say okay I walk away I don't want to buy anything and uh, even after he says stop 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 I, I just keep keep walking out uh, from his shop or from the from the place and uh, yeah suddenly the price uh, starts to drop because he thinks I will not buy anything so yeah that's a, that's a good strategy in my opinion and uh, it uh, it is working uh, usually <laughs> Thank you, I'm fine. Fine. Nice, nice. And we are still in the old town. This is the enter of another bazaar, the Grand Souk. So for a tourist who really love uh, negotiating, this is like a paradise because you can find all kind of uh, stuff here. Thank you, thank you. This Dubai chocolate, very famous, but just... No, no. Another famous uh, shopping street, yeah, it's a bazaar in Dubai, the Gold Souk, Dubai City of Gold. You can find all kind of uh, gold and uh, diamonds and jewelry here. Yeah, let's take a look inside. How does it look like? Coffee bag shoes, watches, watches. Hello, 
Really fancy indeed. which is a very old tradition to bring uh, people on the other side of the Dubai Creek and it costs only one dirham let's check if we can do that houses in Dubai constructed in 1897 it was the residence of uh, Syed Al Maktoum Sheikh Syed Al Maktoum he was the ruler of Dubai between 1912 and 1958 he is the grandfather of uh, the current ruler of uh, Dubai uh, his highness the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum You can see it's a typical Arabic uh, house, very beautiful. And very old.
like a labyrinth. And welcome everybody from Lafbach uh, Desert. This is very close to Dubai, just one hour ride, and uh, it was very easy to get there because uh, there are a lot of trips organized uh, from Dubai. Now, because of the COVID, it's more uh, cheaper. It was uh, only like 20 euros to have a desert safari. Uh, as I mentioned, it's like one, one hour uh, from Dubai, and I'm wearing this uh, Arabic outfit. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really, really funny and really interesting. So, uh, we will go for a camel ride too. It's, uh, yeah, it should be, should be fun so yeah let's get started
this is what uh, they call dune bashing with the car absolutely amazing it was a bumpy ride but wow <laughs> just riding between the dunes amazing and this view is absolutely beautiful incredible i was never in a desert it's really really amazing Control your balance. <laughs> okay, come back. So now I tried sandboarding too. Well, it was a little bit lame, but <laughs> yeah, it really had fun. It was uh, very nice. And uh, yeah, for first try, it was not that bad. <laughs> It was absolutely incredible view, I uh, really enjoyed this. It's my first time in the desert and it's really amazing. So yeah, it was totally worth to come here. And we still have the camel ride, which is uh, in front of us. So yeah, it will be incredible. is going to begin now. Eat. Bat, bat. Ah, bite. <laughs> bat or bark? Yes, slowly bat. <laughs> what, what's the name of the camel? Name Laila.
<laughs> so this was our trip to the desert. Uh, I forgot some information. Uh, we traveled to another emirate, which is uh, Sharjah. So we left uh, the emirate of Dubai. The next station is Arriga. We will take a walk uh, in the Ju near the Jumeirah lakes and uh, we will travel to the uh, Jumeirah Palm too, which is uh, the, one of the biggest artificial islands of the world. You can imagine uh, how much did it cost. Uh, like uh, in the middle of the, uh, well not in the middle of the sea, but uh, uh, the Arabics uh, constructed uh, this uh, huge uh, island which uh, looks like a palm and uh, we, will, we will travel there. And uh, another attraction will be the Dubai Marina. So we will see a lot of yachts and uh, boats and a uh, lot of uh, fancy attractions. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, you will enjoy it. In this vlog, uh, I will not have so much uh, interesting stories to tell. We will just focus on the uh, beautiful uh, sights and uh, enjoy the view, the beautiful colors and the modern uh, uh, architecture and attractions. So let's get started. So we can see a lot of skyscrapers here. These are the so-called uh, Jumeirah Lake Towers. As, uh, this uh, district is uh, the Jumeirah and uh, we have here a lot of artificial lakes. This is one of them. So, so yeah, even the lake is uh, artificial uh, here in this, uh, this part of uh, Dubai. And uh, these skyscrapers doesn't serve as an offices. Uh, they are all uh, uh, livings so you can actually buy an apartment here i don't know the prices but uh, they gave a lot of uh, apartments in rent for tourists and I can tell you the price it's uh, approximately 300 uh, romanian lace <laughs> i don't know if it helps for you oh i'm joking um, it's uh, like uh, 60 65 uh, euros for a night and that's include that uh, includes uh, all the tourist uh, taxes, uh, cleaning fee and administration fee. Well, it's not uh, very expensive, but not cheap as well. It's because uh, of uh, this territory and uh, the beach is very close to and the Dubai Marina as well. Uh, this is the place where we are going uh, next. Good news for the tourists who actually want to live here. Uh, the Dama Properties Metro Station is very close in walkable distance, so uh, oh, that's a very strange uh, bird <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, yeah it's a uh, walkable distance and then uh, you can get by the Dubai Metro to all sightseeing attractions included in the uh, downtown so yeah it's easily accessible and after we leave the artificial lake uh, we find much more skyscrapers well in Dubai we can find almost everywhere but that one uh, looks uh, very similar to the turning torso in Malmö you can watch the vlog about it if you didn't do it yet already the Dubai Marina the world's largest uh, man-made marina interesting information each tower has uh, its own name its own unique name which makes navigation much more easier and uh, even if you take a taxi uh, you can just tell him uh, which tower you want to go and then 
he takes you there and in front of us we can see the flag of the United Arab Emirates it was just a few weeks ago when uh, in the country it was the Flags Day Flags Day meant that uh, they put a lot of flags all over the country I observe that I'm the only one who is walking usually um, yeah <laughs> it's not really a common uh, thing to walk in Dubai because everybody is uh, hiring renting a car or going by taxi or I don't know use some public transportation well if the distance is very big I'm using transportation public transportation as well but uh, I think uh, tourists can discover much more uh, if uh, just walk for example here I can see uh, construction they were uh, constructing a new skyscraper and it was very interesting I stopped uh, for a few minutes to take a look how they are working and I never saw uh, such a thing so it was very interesting and of course I didn't took a video there I think it's not allowed anyway and it wouldn't be polite uh, to to take a video of them but what I wanted to say it's like uh, you can experience much more by walking what you can see on the right side it's uh, the sky skydive Dubai even that uh, you can do here but it's very expensive it's uh, more than 300 euro for one dive uh, with an experienced uh, diver but it's the best way to see the Palm Jumeirah the, the artificial uh, island which I mentioned already which uh, has a form of, uh, of a palm we will not see uh, this whole uh, uh, structure of the palm because uh, you need to be in the sky to, to observe it so yeah it's, it's really expensive so this time I will skip it but I hope uh, that in my life I will <laughs> I will experience that and try it. That's a bar. <laughs> you would believe or not, but uh, that's a hanging bar. They are drinking there and having fun. Very interesting. I ever saw such a thing. <laughs> Incredible. You don't believe what kind of options do you have in Dubai. Here's the Marina Bay beach. It looks like uh, closed or I just chose the wrong way. But uh, it doesn't matter. I think I will find a way how to get there. I don't know if it's a public beach or not, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the next beach over, over this one, it's a public beach. So we can uh, enter there. That's for sure. So it was a private beach uh, of a five-star hotel there, so we cannot go inside. I was stopped by the security guy, but uh, we will find another one. Hey, it's a pity on the map you cannot see uh, if it's a private beach or not, if it's allowed to go inside or not. The GPS just uh, takes you inside and <laughs> uh, you will be stopped by the security. Well, they were not so creative uh, when they give a name for this uh, beach. It's called The Beach, <laughs> so it doesn't have any specific name. I was walking on the parallel road of the, uh, with the beach and uh, couldn't see any entrance. This is why I couldn't uh, just turn right to the beach and this is the first uh, street where I could take on right and uh, yeah, come down to the sea really beautiful here
Dubai is a very safe city, so if you're traveling alone, then uh, you just la leave your stuff uh, on the beach and you go swimming inside of the sea. Nothing will happen, uh, nobody will steal it, so it's uh, really safe. Safe. So this time uh, I will just uh, skip this too, because uh, tomorrow I will come here to swim and probably much more days uh, when I'm here, because I really love uh, swimming. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, even uh, if it's very safe, uh, maybe it's better to split uh, my activities, taking uh, videos with my camera and uh, and uh, going to the beach or swimming. So I will not be afraid that somebody just uh, takes my camera, even if I, even though I said uh, it's it's really safe and nobody steals. Maybe it's it's a better choice to uh, do like this. If you travel to Dubai, you should remember this building, the Pier 7, because uh, this is the best spot to take amazing photos of the Dubai Marina. A lot of yachts are uh, docking here, and as you can see, the view of the skyscrapers is simply amazing. For the shopping lovers, uh, this is Dubai Marina Mall. So even here in the Dubai Marina, you can find a very big shopping mall. And if you're traveling with a larger budget, then uh, you can even rent a yacht or go to a yacht tour with a group. I saw prices from 500 until 800 dirham and probably much more expensive ones as well. 100 dirham is like 22 euros, so this is how you can do the math. And if you want to take a cheap uh, ship cruise, then uh, it's a possibility to uh, cruise through the Dubai Marina. It's not very expensive. The turnaround, the round trip uh, ticket costs only 27 uh, dirham, and uh, 10 dirham is 2.2 euro, so it's not expensive at all. So it's really recommended for a tourist who want to discover the marina like this. So it's the Jumeirah Lakes. Absolutely beautiful and peaceful in this lake. Leave a comment if you would like to live here. Share your opinion, I'm very curious. Well, it has advantages and disadvantages. It's very beautiful, for sure. take a cruising trip uh, now we are at the pier 7 as you can see and uh, why is this important uh, because here you can have uh, uh, cruising tours it's like uh, part of the public transportation what's uh, important that uh, we have like uh, two scheduled uh, cruising uh, trips 
uh, by this ship at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. and uh, these are much more uh, cheaper it's only 50 dirham is like uh, 11 uh, euros so not, uh, not expensive at all other private tours are really expensive so uh, it's recommended to, to take this one and we will take uh, this cruising trip around the artificial uh, island, the Palm Jumeirah it will be uh, really beautiful I was swimming over there yesterday it's uh, Dubai Marina Beach Island, uh, which has a form of a palmer, and uh, you can't believe uh, how big uh, this uh, construction was to make such an artificial island uh, here in Dubai. It's, uh, they made a research before it if it's even feasible, if it can be constructed or not, and they began with uh, the construction in 2001, and uh, they used 90 million. Uh, uh, cube meters of uh, sand which were exploited uh, from the bottom of the of the Persian uh, sea and they used uh, 7 million uh, of uh, stones uh, if you could use your sand uh, it wouldn't be enough and uh, they finished the work and uh, the constructions uh, already in uh, 2006 uh, not in uh, five years 40, 40,000 of workers uh, were uh, working on it so yeah the dimensions of this island and the constructions are really unbelievable on the leaves of the palm uh, we can find a lot of luxus uh, villa, villas and uh, on the trunk uh, we can uh, find a lot of uh, hotels well everything is exquisite here and uh, very expensive you can't even uh, find public transportation here well there are some buses but uh, they are really rare so in the background we can see the Burj Al Arab as well for, for just a second another interesting fact that uh, they even constructed uh, some kind of shield to protect uh, this artificial island from the big waves and uh, this shield has uh, huge dimensions as well they are more kilometers long shaped uh, as a half uh, moon to, to protect uh, this island so this is the Atlantis a five-star hotel built between 2006 and 2008 it was the first uh, building in this artificial island and uh, uh, which is very interesting that there's even royal suit which uh, uh, 24,000 uh, uh, dollars for a night so every every uh, hotel room is uh, very expensive here and uh, only the personal of the hotel is uh, 3,500 so it's a very big uh, hotel and very exquisite very expensive very interesting it has a very very interesting shape we can see the downtown from there it's uh, that huge building is the Burj Khalifa and in front of us is the Burj Al Arab approaching the, the downtown of uh, Dubai we can see the Burj Khalifa better now and this uh, ship is uh, cruising to, to the old town of Dubai this is where I will get off and uh, 
I will come back by metro to my accommodation. But before that I will buy some souvenirs here because if you're looking for souvenirs, another hint uh, from me, then uh, don't go to, uh, to the malls because there you can find a very high price. It's better to go to these uh, soaps and uh, bazaars which uh, you can see in my vlog about uh, the old town of Dubai. And there you can bargain and you can buy cheap uh, souvenirs. And another hint is to go to the so-called day-to-day shop. There are fixed price, uh, very cheap uh, souvenirs and gifts. So it's very advisable to go there. slowly approaching the Al Gubaiba Marina station. This is where we get off. We are already in the old town of uh, Dubai, in the old Dubai. This is the name of the station where we got off Al Gubaiba. And this was the ship which we took. Behind me you can see the highest building of the world, uh, the Burj Khalifa. It's 828.8 uh, uh, meters high, 300 meters taller than uh, the Taipei 101, which was the tallest uh, building of the world for uh, some years, which is located in uh, Taiwan. What you should know about uh, this building, it was uh, designed by Adrian Smith and uh, it was uh, built between 2004 and uh, uh, 4th January of 2010 when it was opened for public. Uh, there are a lot of offices inside and uh, even it's a res residential building. When I walked there and tried to take some photos, the security uh, uh, stopped me and said no, I'm not allowed uh, to take photos, uh, not even photos. So yeah, uh, uh, because uh, people are living there. But one friend of mine uh, told me that yeah, it's not so nice to live there because uh, uh, they, uh, it's prohibited to open the windows, so you can imagine that uh, you have a luxurious apartment uh, in uh, the middle of Dubai and you can't open the windows. Yeah, but uh, uh, it's uh, maybe if uh, you are focused only uh, on the fancy uh, living uh, inside and you have air conditioning, of course it's, it's not a big deal, but uh, even though uh, me personally I like uh, fresh air and open, open the windows and not uh, fresh air from the air conditioning. So, yeah, uh, as I said, uh, it was constructed in six years. Uh, they planned uh, a such shorter construction time, but uh, they used uh, much uh, uh, fancier and more expensive material for, for uh, the building. That's why it took some time. Uh, uh, the construction was uh, led by the Samsung uh, uh, company, which uh, also took part uh, in the building of uh, the Taipei 101 and uh, the Petronas uh, Twin Towers in uh, Kuala Lumpur. And one more thing, uh, the security guy uh, stopped me uh, even here because he said vlogging is not allowed because this is a property of MR. MR is a, it's a very rich uh, company, it was constructed a lot of uh, skyscrapers here. Uh, and uh, yeah, this doesn't stop me yet. I hope that I can upload it on the YouTube and it will not be banned. Well, uh, Burj Khalifa is property of, uh, of uh, the MR, but maybe I can uh, speak about it and I can show it to the public. Uh, that shouldn't be prohibited. I hope uh, it will be fine. <laughs> This 
is the opera house uh, in Dubai. This is the Dubai Mall from outside. And you can see there a pedestrian uh, walk, it's uh, very fancy, like uh, 900 uh, meters long and it takes the way from the Dubai uh, metro, the, du the metro station of uh, the Burj Khalifa and Dubai mall is over there and uh, you can just walk through this uh, tunnel, it's uh, very modern and very fancy and very useful and very practical as well. So now I am inside of the tower of the Burj Khalifa on a lower floor. I am the only tourist, it's a little bit strange. There are not many people traveling during the pandemic and uh, another reason is that locals are not traveling. That is, the, that is Sunday and it's the first day of the week. It's a little bit uh, uh, interesting for us uh, Europeans because uh, we are... Uh, we have a weekend uh, on uh, Saturday and Sunday and here they this is different uh, Friday and Saturday is the weekend Absolutely incredible. There is the Dubai fountain, what you can see if you remember that vlog. And, uh, this huge building on the left is the Dubai Mall. What we should know about the entrance fees, uh, I didn't research that very well. Uh, there is a VIP ticket uh, with, uh, which allows to go uh, to the top of the building, so to the very top. And uh, that costs, uh, costs uh, 125 euros approximately, so more than 500 uh, dirham. And that's very, very expensive. What's included, not just going uh, to the top, but it includes uh, an entrance fee to the Dubai Aquarium and Zoo, underwater zoo. This is what I didn't know, um, even though I always uh, do some research before I'm coming there. And maybe that's a new promotion, or I don't know, because when I checked the, the opening times, opening hours of uh, the Burj Khalifa and uh, entrance fees, then I didn't see this one. So I already went uh, to the aquarium uh, some year, some uh, days ago, like three days ago, and so yeah, I thought it's a waste of money to pay such a big fee, uh, and I get a ticket to the aquarium which I already visited. Well, uh, they said uh, that brunch is included, but there are only some snacks, coffee and tea. So I think uh, this price is very exaggerated, it's a very, very high price. So what's the second option uh, which I took? Uh, I'm on the 124th floor currently. And as you can see, even from here, we have a very nice view. And uh, that one was like 32 euros. Uh, you can uh, do the math. <laughs> I don't have internet connection now. Uh, so it was 178 uh, dirham and that is my approximation like 30 
235 uh, euros You can hire a professional photographer as well here. <laughs> probably not for free. Well, not probably for sure, it's not for free. Looks very exquisite. It's that uh, pool and the top, top of the building. Just enjoy the view. And look, what you can see over there, it's. Uh, there are artificial islands made from sand so if you would uh, pay for a very exquisite uh, helicopter ride uh, you could uh, recognize that uh, those are the continents of the earth so it really looks like uh, the map of the world from above well maybe if we would pay for the VIP ticket <laughs> and go upstairs then uh, we could we could uh, see from the top of the Burj Khalifa as well. We can see the Burj Al Arab there as well, the highest hotel of the world. So in this intermediate ticket uh, which I bought, it's included to go one more floor above. So the last recordings uh, were from the floor 124 and now I am on the floor 125 and the VIP ticket takes you to the floor 148. Uh, 148 and we have a better view on the Dubai fountain from here and 
there are the fancy angel wings here. Uh, everybody likes to pose usually to make the nice Instagram photos. <laughs> Yeah, you can find a lot of uh, choices here. What you what to do when uh, after you uh, you are here, uh, you can buy a lot of uh, souvenirs. Uh, well, most of the most of them are very expensive. But I wanted to say uh, there is a virtual reality game. <laughs> you need it's uh, called the Mission Impossible because you need to climb the Burj Khalifa in five minutes uh, and then uh, jump from there. <laughs> so, yeah, for the lovers of the virtual games and uh, the 3D stuff. Uh, it would be really interesting, it costs uh, 35 uh, dirham, 10 dirham is like 2.2 euro, so just uh, for you to con conversion, it's not uh, uh, that uh, expensive, but well, it is not really mine, I was never attracted uh, to this kind of uh, virtual reality stuff and uh, I was never a gamer as well, so <laughs> I will just skip it for now. This is the Burj Khalifa lake. It's an artificial lake built on 12 hectares. In front of us is the Burj Khalifa. And on the right side you can see the Dubai Mall. the global village now which is a huge amusement park it's very interesting because uh, we can see the special buildings of uh, several countries here and uh, we can find all kind of uh, shopping dining uh, and amusement uh, 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 options here so it's really fancy shiny and uh, uh, yeah we can uh, wonder about uh, the different lights and uh, you can find uh, everything here from shopping perfumes uh, uh, from all over the world and uh, uh, literally every cuisine uh, what, you, what you want uh, you can find here so yeah let's uh, wander about the lights and uh, let's uh, take a look uh, what we can find here After entering the amusement park, we can find the Colosseum, uh, the Eiffel Tour from Paris, and the Iraqi Bazaar. So, as I said, you can find everything here. There is a separate part for Turkey, and uh, it's bazaars, and uh, we can find a lot of Turkish specialties inside. Not only uh, food, but uh, several souvenirs and everything. Yeah, this uh, amusement park is like a travel all over the world. You can find. Uh, 
each uh, specialty is from uh, the uh, most uh, famous countries and which have really special traditional uh, food and uh, souvenirs and everything in front of us we can see a copy of the Brandenburg Gate from Berlin over there is Syria, then Azerbaijan Palestine, Jordan, Egypt and all this building offers uh, local specialties from those countries This is inside of uh, Europe As you can see we find the uh, European souvenirs Dolce Vita Can meet even Julius Caesar here. <laughs> Very interesting concept uh, of this park. The Statue of Liberty. After this gate, we can find uh, attractions and uh, souvenirs of North America. This is where the amusement park begins with roller coaster and uh, everything. Russia, Japan. Yeah, if you like uh, these fancy lights and uh, this uh, travel around the world, you should uh, visit uh, this park because it's, it's really, really beautiful. For me personally, it's a little bit too much, but <laughs> yeah, well, everything, uh, everybody can uh, decide for its own taste if it's uh, fine or not.
this is the gate of Africa. Absolutely amazing uh, buildings. This is the gate of India. Well, as you can see, uh, I don't uh, really have so much to tell about these attractions because uh, it's just uh, we enjoy the lights and uh, and the view. It's uh, really spectacular here, but I don't really have any stories about it. So, yeah, I'm very curious uh, if you if you like uh, this park or not, and uh, if you enjoy this vlog. Well, uh, for me, it's uh, it's only a personal opinion, but for me, it's too fancy and. Uh, but I like the concept, so it's, it's, it's interesting, so yeah, leave some comments, uh, what is your opinion about this park, about this amusement place, and uh, uh, let's discuss about it. Well, you can find all kind of uh, African uh, souvenirs here and all kind of local specialties. Yeah, I mean, not local, local here in Dubai, I mean, local in Africa. This is what makes this place very special. As you find, uh, you can find everything all over the world. The toilet is shining like Las Vegas here in the global village. <laughs> Incredible.
We are at the Burj Al Arab now, one of the symbols of the city. This uh, luxury hotel uh, uh, looks like a ship and uh, it's the tallest hotel of the world. It's uh, 321 uh, meters uh, high, so it's uh, really luxurious. It's a five star hotel. Uh, yeah, we can just admire uh, this hotel from different angles because without a reservation, we are not allowed to, to go inside or to go closer. And one more interesting fact about it uh, it's built on an artificial island. And this island uh, can be approached only on one bridge and uh, on that bridge uh, you can see it's uh, only one way out and one way in uh, and uh, there is like a security uh, checking uh, if you are allowed if you're authorized to cross uh, this private bridge or not so yeah we, we have no chance to sneak in but uh, yeah we will just uh, admire this beautiful uh, building and uh, one other interesting fact is uh, we can uh, treat this uh, hotel like an uh, old building in Dubai because it was constructed between 1994 and uh, finished uh, in 1999. So it's one of the uh, first uh, luxurious hotels of, uh, of Dubai. In the peak uh, um, years of the construction there were uh, 2000 people who were uh, working on uh, this uh, building. So you can imagine uh, its uh, dimensions, it's really huge and uh, of course really fancy and uh, really expensive. The cheapest one it's uh, uh, for 1000 uh, uh, euro for a night, if I still remember well. But uh, you can find, I'm pretty sure about this information because I remember this, uh, the most expensive is 15000 euro for one night. Yeah, it's that expensive. And if you think it's not enough for you to just admire the nice view of Burj Al Arab, you can go inside of the Wild Wadi water park. You can find all kinds of uh, water adventures here. I just turned left uh, from the Burj Al Arab and I'm trying to get to a beach from here because uh, there is an amazing view of the hotel from uh, from that beach but I'm not sure how, how we can get there <laughs> so yeah, it will be interesting I don't know what is this <laughs> I just arrived here and it's very beautiful so I'm recording it well this is a big advantage if you walk on foot you don't take always the public transportation because by walking you can reach some places you didn't even know exist <laughs> so it's really nice looks like a modern fortress but I think it belongs to a hotel because when I was walking there there was a lot of signs that it's some kind of hotel here but anyway we are here <laughs> Well, in the end, I realized where I am. <laughs> this is the Souk Madinat. Moreover, this building. So if you are close to Burj Al Arab, it's very nice to admire this uh, mall. It's a shopping mall. But uh, I like more the architecture. It's typical Arabic. And maybe it's closed because nobody is here. I didn't see uh, anybody. Or maybe we'll be open later. Yeah, I just got there after I was searching for the Jumeirah beach uh, close to the Burj Al Arab. Because from there you can take very nice photos. But uh, I think uh, that one is not open only for the guests of the hotel and uh, for the guests of this hotel, because this is a hotel as well and uh, there are some more on the other side 
and my assumption I think it's uh, correct because there's another beach the Jumeirah public beach and that's open for the public and uh, this one very close to Burj Al Arab it's uh, only for the hotel guests you can take a boat trip as well from Sok Madinat and uh, the cruising will not take you only on this uh, uh, canal so you go out to the sea and you can admire the view of Burj Al Arab this is what I read now I almost uh, managed to sneak in, in a five-star hotel's beach <laughs> to the left side of the Burj Al Arab but uh, yeah, I got through the first checkpoint and uh, at the second at the second uh, they stopped me I was almost touching the sand and <laughs> well, I was almost there but uh, they didn't let me let me enter so what we will do, what we will do now uh, it's uh, that we will go on the right side of the Burj Al Arab and try to take some uh, good photos and some uh, videos from there so I kept walking uh, right from the Burj Al Arab and uh, we are up to the Sunset Beach this is the Sunset Beach this part uh, because it's a beautiful sunset view from here over the Burj Al Arab and uh, after that construction area we, you can find the Kite Beach that's uh, very nice as well so these are public uh, beaches so you can enter without uh, paying and it's not private and there's even a lifeguard station so for beginners it's not uh, not so dangerous and anyway the water is very shallow so there are not big chances of drowning Moreover, if you have uh, 194 centimeters like me. <laughs> oh, the sea is very peaceful now. When I was swimming here some days ago, I think it was like four days ago, it was really uh, big waves. Well, if you compare it with Thailand, the uh, sand is not, not so nice as in Thailand. <laughs> this is what I saw in all uh, beaches here in Dubai. It's a little bit rocky. see that point there it's a helipad you can imagine how luxurious is this hotel it has a, a helicopter station incredible so this is the Al Sufuh uh, beach also called uh, the secret beach because it's a little bit hidden You must travel by tram to the Al Sufuk uh, station. It's over there, and uh, you can just navigate by GPS. It's not so not so difficult. It's a short passageway there. You can get uh, to this uh, beach, and uh, from here you can also have a very nice view of uh, Burj Al Arab. Well, for swimming, it's not so suitable as you can see. Uh, the lifeguards put the yellow flag. There are only a few people uh, swimming, and the margins are very very short. You know only a small space to, for uh, swimming we are at uh, La Mer now sounds very French La Mer <laughs> is the most uh, one of the most popular uh, beachfronts uh, here in Dubai not because of the sunbath and uh, of uh, the swimming opportunities and the beautiful uh, uh, beach but uh, you have a lot of uh, outdoor activities here water sport activities which you can try and a uh, lot of street food uh, uh, it's uh, about uh, shopping too because there are some uh, some malls and uh, 
it's also a shopping district uh, here at uh, La Mer. So after we will take a walk here uh, in this uh, area, we will go to the Jumeirah Mosque, one of the most beautiful uh, mosques in, uh, in uh, Dubai. So I think uh, it's worth to uh, watch all this uh, vlog and uh, come with me. So let's get started. Well, the architecture of the buildings are very interesting itself. Water Park And this is the La Mer beach and uh, it's very beautiful because in the background you can see the downtown and uh, even the Burj Khalifa. It's very beautiful to swim uh, and take a look on these skyscrapers of the downtown of Dubai. So that's another reason why it's so popular to, to come to this beach of uh, La Mer. It's really beautiful. And these are the buildings uh, which we saw bef just before, where you can find all kind of food and uh, drinks and everything. And the water park, of course. <laughs> This is where you can try the water sports.
La Mer is laying on a huge field, so there are really a lot of uh, restaurants you can try. There are like streets like this, and uh, on the left and the right you can find uh, all kind of food, which is really amazing. I love food, <laughs> and uh, there are some signs to uh, to not lose the way. Well, I don't want to go to New York now. It's only. 11,000 kilometers, that's nothing. I'm joking. And there are other signs too, to not lose your way and uh, to help in your orientation here in La Mer. Well, probably it's very beautiful uh, in the night, so I came here in the daylight because this is when I had time for it but uh, for a tourist it's really advisable to come here in the night because it has beautiful lights and uh, Honolulu, I think this is with O, Honolulu or maybe in Arabic they write it different Looks like an exotic paradise here with all these palm trees. We are at the Jumeirah Mosque now, which was built between uh, 1976 and 79. It's uh, built in traditional Fatimid style, which is originated from Syria and Egypt. This is the most beautiful mosque uh, in Dubai, and it's very uh, famous touristic uh, attraction as well, because uh, this is the only mo mosque which is open for the public, for uh, non-Muslim uh, religion uh, uh, tourists. So this is why uh, many tourists uh, come here. Currently it's closed because of the pandemic, but usually you can visit it, but only during a guided tour, which is uh, in the uh, before noon, like uh, I think it's 10 a.m. and uh, afternoon 1 p.m. So it's really worth uh, to visit it because uh, the tour guide will tell you about the Muslim religion as well. It just, it's uh, not just uh, like a, a touring uh, through the whole mosque, uh, you can have some uh, information about uh, the religion as well. So I could go inside only to the waiting room because it's closed uh, during the pandemic but they said that uh, they will open tomorrow. Anyway, I didn't plan to go for a visit uh, inside because I already visited some uh, Muslim mosques in Istanbul and in Azerbaijan. So if you want you can check the vlog about Istanbul, I will link it for you now. My plan was to uh, take a look only from outside because I heard this is the most beautiful uh, mosque and they had right so it's really really amazing uh, even if you don't go inside and I got uh, some kind of information about uh, the guided tour experience the Emirati culture this is how they advertise it 
so after tomorrow it's open. Well, as I see, there are uh, different uh, entrance fees. If you just want to enter, then uh, it's 35 uh, dirham. It's almost like 10 euro, but uh, you can even have some cultural meals. It's very interesting. So this could be more, more interesting than uh, my visit in Istanbul. But anyway, I don't think I will have time to, to go inside. But if you visit uh, Dubai and you have a lot of time for it, then it's really interesting because you get some uh, informations about the Muslim religion and it's worth, worth to visit. Well, the Jumeirah Mosque is only 700 meters uh, far from the Lamer, so I advise you if you travel to Dubai, uh, it's the best way to visit both of them uh, together because uh, they are so so close to each other. Well, uh, you must pay attention uh, to the rules of entering to the mosque, like uh, the woman must, must cover their shoulders and uh, the knees, and uh, sometimes even uh, the male visitors should cover their their uh, knees. So. It's not really polite to go there in uh, shorts. So yeah, you must take in consideration uh, this information. We are going to the Akudra cycling path now. Uh, we have uh, different tracks uh, which we can uh, uh, complete. We, we were uh, completing like a, a medium uh, a distance, like 24, uh, 28 uh, kilometers. Yeah, it's very special because we will go through the desert. So it will be really, really interesting. So I hope uh, that you will enjoy it. Let's get started. This is only the beginning, it's not a very deserted area here. So if you come to the cycling path you will expect that uh, in the beginning it will be uh, not so interesting and not so spectacular because uh, we are uh, uh, next to the road and uh, there are some construction areas too so it's not so enjoyable well uh, the cycling is enjoyable anyway but uh, we are not in the desert yet and uh, this is uh, this is why I came here so I decided to take a longer path well it's really windy so that's really bothering and uh, it's hard to hard to ride like this but uh, it's not that bad and as you can see the view it's uh, gonna start to be more beautiful I think after this hill we will get uh, to the desert it will be nice incredible view to cycle around the sand dunes
Well, we just got, uh, well, we just met like a antelope uh, herd. It's really interesting. I don't know exactly what kind of uh, animals are these. But I think it's antelope. But uh, what I wanted to say, it's uh, totally worth to come here because uh, it's a uh, it's really amazing view and uh, I really enjoyed it. The sand dunes and yeah, like in the middle of the nowhere and it's not that hot. It's uh, like 28 degrees because we are in the end of uh, November, winter is coming. So yeah, this trekking is not really advised to do it uh, when uh, it's... Uh, summer here because in summer between june and august it's uh, almost 50 degrees in the desert or at least uh, 40 so that would be a torture <laughs> So peaceful. Man, at work.
I hope you really enjoyed uh, this uh, travel, it's like a movie, <laughs> this very long travel film uh, about uh, Dubai. I really loved it, loved my stay here, it was really amazing. So uh, if you liked it also then uh, please subscribe to my channel if you didn't do that before. And it's very important to press the bell icon because uh, this is how you get notified about the new contents. So have a nice day and goodbye.